Welcome to the Rich in Success podcast, the podcast that aims to define exactly what success is to you and helps you implement this into your daily life. Hosted by cousins, actor, singer and multiple business owner Matt Hall and ex-rugby player, health, well-being and fitness coach Dan Ramsden. Join them on this exciting journey as they unravel the minds of their inspirational guests in a quest of self-discovery. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? If so, this is the podcast for you. Now let today's lesson begin. Welcome back to this episode of Rich in Success. As always, thank you very much for joining us. And this week we have got actor of Footballers Wives and Coronation Street fame, my mate, Pete Ash. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Yeah. Good. good thank you. you. Yeah, you too. Pete and I did a play, was it two years ago now? I think. Oh, I'm rubbish with dates and years. So yeah, we. would have been, because last year we did the, um, I feel like the you, second time. You did it without me. Yeah. I didn't want to say that. Yeah. And it was not as good, right? right? I don't know. Oh, sorry. Good. Oh, good. <laughs> it was actually very good and it was it was brilliant to work with you. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And I wanna dive in really. So seventeen years old and you got your first kind of major breakthrough with Football's Wise playing yeah. Darius. Yeah, that's right. What was that experience like? Because at the time the show had already kind of done a series, hadn't it, and was massive. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd never seen it myself, so right, okay. You know, so you had no idea. I had what... no idea quite how crazy it would become. But uh, so did you grab the VHS dead quick and try and catch up? I didn't actually. No, I didn't, I you just watched, watched the first into it. series at all. Right, right. okay. But yeah, it was not crazy because I'm not long. I had an agent at that point. I was okay. I was still at college doing A levels. Um, I was really lucky enough to get an agent whilst I was doing my A-levels still, because usually you have to go through drama school, mm. three years, do a showcase, with the chance, you know, with just the hope of getting an agent. So I was really lucky to get an agent when I did. And one of my first auditions was Footballers' Wives. Wow. Yeah, I went down to London on the train for that. Then I had a call back with, uh, reading with Zoe Looker, um, played Tanya Turner in it. So again, I was even more like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had not done many auditions, so I didn't know, you know, what they were like or anything, but... So at college, were you studying drama or was... Yeah, just yeah. A-levels. It wasn't like a special drama no. school or anything. It was just um, doing A-levels, drama, English and media studies, mm-hmm. I did. And, I, and NAS in music as well. Mm. We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> did that help you not know it? what you were going in for as because it was a yeah. massive show at the I guess time. It, had I known how big it was and, uh, you know, how big a star... Because that was the first was the first thing you did, the, f- the actual first thing. My first professional job, yeah. That's I, insane, I'd done lots of amateur stuff, you know, yeah. at school plays, local theatre groups and all that kind of stuff. That's where it, I grew to love acting, really. Yeah. But yeah, Football's Wives was my first professional job. And, and then you stayed in it for, like... Was it four years, something I think like that? Four series of it, yeah, 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 yeah. Which was great. I mean, I learned so much on that job, you know, working with great actors, and it was a great insight into the business, into the industry, I guess. Mm. And to have that at such a young age as well mm. was amazing. I got the part within a week, they said, right, move down to London, you're going to start filming. <sighs> that quick? Yeah. A few weeks later, I'm, um, I'm half naked in a swimming pool with Zoe Locker. It's like, this is crazy. Well, that was the thing, wasn't it? So your character kind of came in as the young footballer. Was, yeah. And I believe the storyline at the time, uh, Tanya was like married to, to the captain Jason, of, of the team. Jason Turner. Who yeah. was a bit of a bad boy. He was, I think they was going through a, a sort of separation and straight away she, she jumped on the new young signing and got you, yeah. as you say, naked in the pool. There you go, yeah. yeah. Obviously she was using me to kind of get back at Jason and that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, but obviously he's a young lad. He fell in love and all that kind of stuff. So it was it was pretty sweet that first series anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really what? Nice. How did you find that? Like especially when you're so young, doing like those kind of new scenes. Did you, did you ever find that weird, or was you always quite cool with it? I, it's 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 so surreal. It really is. Yeah. Mm. But it was. I don't know. It wasn't a swelling away because it was a close set, mm. and obviously, you know, Zoe was proper nice and everything and. Obviously, I think they all knew that I was proper new to this as well. I'd never yeah. done anything like this before. Yeah. So they were all really nice and understanding. And, you know, I wasn't completely naked, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did, would you say you was quite recognised? Did you, you have much experience with that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I had a good year 
if you want to start filming before it was oh, yeah. aired or anything. So that was cool. I was mm. able to kind of settle in and prepare myself really from what other people were telling me. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I guess I'm really lucky that social media want a thing then, because I don't, I don't think I'd be able to have handled that as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I know mm. that's that's become so big in the end days, and it you've got to be so careful with it as well. So I'm really lucky, and I'm glad that I kind of grew up before all that, all yeah. that really. Because it is, we were just saying, weren't we? It was a totally different world. You forget how much things have changed. Like, Apple didn't even exist. It wasn't a brand, mm. or it wasn't in the mainstream. And now, it controls, like, most people's lives. You've either yeah. got an iPhone or a laptop, and, and as you say, social media. Mm. Um, and I think for anybody in the public eye today, it's a totally different world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it can be hard to kind of switch off from all that. What's the pressure like, obviously, being in the public eye, you're new to it, you're young? It was difficult, yeah. I mean, I'm a pretty quiet person, really, in real life, do you know what I mean? I'm not that much of an outgoing person, really. Um, and especially when I was younger, I could be really shy at times as well, so it was like really... But it does get overwhelming yeah. to have that at times. But I was lucky in the way that it was always... 99% of the time, it was always... People being sweet about it, being cool about it, do you know what I mean? Oh, I love, you know, I love you in that, mate, it's brilliant. And oh, that's good. So, it's, it was good, but obviously having that a lot, it still can be a bit overwhelming now, because sometimes you just want to just want to walk down the street and, you know, be in your own little world, don't you, sometimes? I've been lucky, really, because in Football's Wives, my character started off really innocent, wide-eyed, kind of new face, fresh-faced footballer. By the end, the last series it did, he'd raped a girl in Spain. Right. So, you know, when that storyline came out, I was breaking it because I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to get all the, the, the hate and that. But I didn't, I, I think there was one, I think, and it was like, it was a kid, so it wasn't even that bad, like, oh, you rapist. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? That was it. And <laughs> I, I got it so lightly, because I know people who have played parts like that and, you know, they get, they get hate yeah. for it. That's always interested it me, is. that, that side mean, of it. You know, yeah. Because that must be horrible. It must. I mean, you, obviously, to do a part in a great show would be amazing, but then if it's, you know, yeah. if you're a proper nasty person in it, people are going to hate you for it. I know. What was it like when it all came to an end? Because obviously the show kind of acted, didn't it? Yeah, well, I... Uh, what was it now? So I was in season two, three, four, and five. I think there was one more after I left. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it finished after that. Mm -hmm. Um, so did you actually decide to leave then? It wasn't the thing of the show just got axed and there was no more... No, my, my character was written out, I think, halfway through season five. Right, okay. Five, yeah, yeah. So, it wasn't my choice, but... Oh, right, okay. Um, well, it's just the way it was, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we're going to go out now. Um, but I was fine with that, because I think by then, you know, the series was kind of winding down. Did you bit. feel ready? Like... Yeah, because it was like, yeah, I've done four years. Yeah, that. it was yeah. great. I've learned loads and, you know, time to move on, really. Right, so, okay. you know, I did a few other little bits on TV, some nice parts, did a bit of Casual Turk, which was great. Uh, Blue Murder, the pilot for that. Oh, All right, right, okay. Um, so, yeah, I had some really nice kind of roles after that. But yeah, yeah eventually it did kind of, it dropped off a bit and it got quiet and quiet and quiet. So, yeah, there was a, a period where, I wasn't working, it, it, you know, it was at the point where someone asked you what you do, I wasn't saying I'm an actor, I was telling them what my day job was, because really? I wasn't really doing much at all. What's the transition like there? You know, obviously, from something mm. so big mm. to to the decline yeah. and not getting it the was, work, what, what does that feel like? It was difficult, yeah, it is, because obviously, on one hand, you... You know, you've had all this. Although you know it's not the last forever, you know, you can't get used to it. You think, obviously... Did no. you, though? Because you were so young. Was the part... Did, was there always part of you that were quite mature and always looked forward and went, these things don't last forever? Or did you allow yourself to get carried away and this is it? No, I I, I didn't allow myself to get yeah. carried away. People, even people were saying, like, oh, you don't have to worry about anything now. You made it, you made it, you get jobs. Yeah, yeah, Come out yeah. your house and all that. But I just didn't believe it because I... OK. You know, I... I knew it wasn't like that, even mm. back then. Like, I'd known people who'd been this for years, and then... You could get some good advice from fellow actors who... Yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah. That sort of thing. Definitely. Yeah. But then these other actors as well, say my whole, oh, you don't have to worry about it now, you know, you've been in football as wives, like... Mm. 
you know what I mean? It's it's not like that, and I'm I'm glad that I kind of knew that back then. Yeah, so that's massive. That if you've had that mindset, kind of yeah. throughout, you've kind of protected yourself there from the big shock that I guess a lot of actors could have yeah could do get, don't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's where the depression stuff. kicks in, there, isn't it? Then at that point, mm. if if you mm. if you build this this bubble up and yeah, yeah, and then it's, yeah burst. But it's such a common story, isn't it? And I think for, mm. so for you, what what did you end up? What was the path you took? You ended up getting a, a proper job, as it were, as we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was doing my day jobs. Like, I took so many different types, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't really skilled in anything else. I, I didn't really have a plan B. It yeah. was like, oh, I want to act. I didn't really. I had A levels, I had GCSEs, but yeah. nothing that I could just walk into a job and, you know. And was that always the plan from literally being at school? You was always. Uh, well, I'd say from high school. Yeah was when I had an amazing drama teacher, it right. really inspired me, so okay. it came about then, yeah, yeah. when I thought, oh, this might be something I'd want to do as a career. But yeah, during the time when it got quiet, um, one of the best things I ever did was get involved with Fringe Theatre mm-hmm. in and around Manchester. Because um, it's just, you're still involved then, you're still yeah. doing plays, you're still being creative, and um, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed that, you know. Um, even though it's, you know, you're having to take time off your day job to rehearse, yeah. you're doing profit share a lot of the time, so, you know, sometimes you, you're not, you've spent more on your travel to, mm. to the theatre venue yeah. than you're going to get paid. Yeah. But it was just the fact that you're doing theatre, you're doing live theatre, mm. and you're still, you're still keeping busy. Did you ever feel like you'd failed? Because obviously you've gone from one of the biggest shows mm. to, as you say, like getting paid like literally not enough to cover your travel on some of those. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like, it was it was hard. You know what I mean? You, you feel a bit embarrassed about it, which you shouldn't. You know what yeah. I mean? But people, are, you'd think people are going, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's ridiculous, really, because it's just it's a job. You know what I mean? You go from one job to the next, yeah. and it's such a cutthroat industry. It's as hard, well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, you know, there were times when I, I genuinely thought. I, I, I'm probably not going to work again, you know. Really? Like, in professional acting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, times when you've had a drought, you're not even getting auditions for such a long time. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it, it can be really hard, but then it was like, but if I'm just, you know, if I can keep on doing theatre that I enjoy, and I loved it, and we did a fringe mm-hmm. performance together, it was amazing, fun, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was like, I'm, all, I'm kind of okay with this, do you know what I mean? And by that point, the son had been born as well, so it yeah. was... I had something else to live for as well. That's when the pressure kicks in now as well. Well, it is as well. My, my industry, exactly. Else, you? My yeah. industry is very similar to a certain extent. Mm. Fitness industry. Don't know whether one client's going to fall off on, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I've had that pressure, and honestly, I felt it big time the day that my son was born. I was like. I'm gonna to have to start working hard yeah, it's now. It's not all about you anymore, is it? That's, That's it, and it, yeah. it's a tough. That is a tough one. Did you did you feel that? Yeah, like? but as I say, I think I helped in a way because then it wasn't all about me. It wasn't all about oh, oh I'm gonna have to make it as an actor. It was like it was more like as long as I can. You just knuckle down. You provide, and that's provide it. for him, and you know, as long as I'm doing my bits of acting here and there, that keeps me happy. Then, then I was fine with that. That's yeah. a great mindset to have. But you need, I think you need the shit times, you need the shitty times to appreciate the good times and to give you some, someone to drive towards, don't you? Yeah. I mean, if you were riding high all the time, mm. it would be boring, wouldn't it? Well, you, I think it's, you'd stop It's not real. It. You won't appreciate yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So go on then. What, what were some of those jobs you were doing in that time, aside from the acting, when it, when it was quieter? Oh, I've done, I've done it all, you know. Did call centre jobs, yeah. uh, bar jobs, trade plate driver. That was a fun one, actually. Yeah. yeah. And did you always just feel like it was a job? Did, or did you actually... Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I was always like, oh, I'm just winging this because yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, really. I'm just doing yeah, it for yeah. the paycheck, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to when I'm acting, I put everything to it, do you know what I mean? I'm like, this is my job now, I'm going to smash this. this and Pete this. really does, like, the play what you did was the Second World War One, wasn't it? Yeah. There's the, there was some pretty tough scenes in particular for your character and just watching you in rehearsals I, and that's always the sort of actor I've aspired to be and always been is that I don't do things by halves I, I always want to find my way oh yeah in rehearsals some actors will save it okay you know until the performance until yeah, there's an audience yeah. an audience darling and I noticed that about you very early on is 
you really went for it. Yeah. I don't think I could, do you know what I mean? Do yeah. it half and then give it all on, yeah. you know, your first night. Because yeah. then, what if it's shit? Yeah, <laughs> You've yeah. not like, yeah. worked on that. I don't exactly. know. But obviously, you know, it works different for different people. Mm. Whatever your, you know, whatever your system is, fair mm. play to you. But, no, yeah, I've always found to try and hit the truth of it. Yeah. as early as you can and then you know just build on it from there do you ever struggle with it then if you find it too early getting stale especially yeah if it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely that is a tough one yeah if you get it really good and then you feel it and then it's like cut and yeah, you bloody yeah. hell we felt that mm. and then you what can happen is you tend to chase that same emotion yeah and then you're not really getting the truth of it yeah it can be hard and again with a the long theatre job like I did Warhorse which was 18 months yeah so it's like uh, 300 and odd performances wow the same one every night the same so show. that was hard again to, to like yeah well tell us about it that like it's the first yeah. time how, how, how do you wow. do that what what was your kind of approach when you've heard those same lines 300 odd times and <sighs> and just to try try your best to just imagine it all as fresh you've yeah. never said it before yeah. and yeah it can be very hard to do but again with a touring production Every time you go to a new venue, there's a new kind of energy and a freshness to it as well. Yeah. Because with every theatre, you, you might have to change bits. Yeah. Um, especially with Warhorse, which is so technical. Mm. Depending on the side of the stage yeah. and if it, you know where the audience were, you'd have to move sight lines and mm-hmm. change blocking. But yeah, it was, I mean that was an amazing job again. Like. Yeah, but it, yeah, long long theatre jobs and just trying to keep it fresh can be difficult. Like, yeah. Because it's such a cutthroat industry, and because there's so many people that want to do it, aspire to do it, are doing it, mm. being in a similar position, what do you feel gives gives you the, an edge, especially now because you've you've you know you're now on Coronation Street, you've got you've got a good role on that. What what do you feel is maybe maybe advice to fellow actors, I guess. What, what gives you the edge in making sure that you are going to nail a role? I don't know about edge, but I mean, in terms of, you know, bringing ev- everything you've got to the table, I just think it comes with everything, everything that's behind you, everything you've been through, really, I guess, yeah. the ups and the downs. You draw on so many of your own experiences as a person, so mm. the more experiences you've had, the more shit times you've had, the more... You can put ...amazing it out times you've had, the more you can draw on, really, and yeah. all the little you know, bits in between as well. Um, I think that's what's really interesting, that was gonna, what I was going to ask you, so obviously now uh, you're a regular in, in Coronation Street, mm. and that's what I was interested in, how you feel this time around being in a big show, now you've had that downtime period, you've, you know, you're bringing up a son who's now 10 years old, I believe, this yeah. month, yeah, yeah. and um, you've been through all that, and I know like for myself, I've probably done the least amount of acting this last year, two years really for me, but I've also probably been on the biggest journey in my personal life. So like, I've been through a big breakup after six years with somebody that was yeah. pretty nasty. I had a few pretty shit deaths happen, and I've um, probably been to some of my lowest places. And now where I'm at, I just think I've not been given many opportunities, you know, to act recently. But I feel so different about the prospect of getting. A good job mm. because I feel like do you know when you when you're younger and you see those scenes where somebody dies or somebody has a breakup you see it so much on telly it's on every soap it's on every drama every film so you kind of know how to play it mm. once you've experienced that it's, it's so different, different. yes yeah, yeah. Mm. So shit that's what it actually feels like mm. is that something you feel now in Corrie that you're with the life experience you can be you are a much stronger actor because you are you, you're more, you know, you've yeah, been through a lot more. totally. I mean, it, it, it's true, you know, by any age, really. I think even, you've never learned it all. Yeah. You know, there'll always be something new to learn, yeah. some new way of looking at a thing, and you do get better with age, mm. I think. Because, yeah, because you do have more of that experience to draw on, I think. Mm. What about with the, we've obviously just talked about the, the fame at such a young age, are you finding that you, you're now dealing with it in a social media age? Age, is that... Brought new challenges? Are you a bit? But I, I, I tend to not go in there that much, really. I mean, so you just keep away from it a lot. 
have that as much separation. As I, I, yeah, as much as I can, because yeah. I, I think sometimes it, it, you can get lost in it. And yeah. You do see it as the real world, and it's completely not. It's all you know, people's best moments in it. It's all there. Uh, Highlight reel, basically, yeah. and that's so dangerous. We spoke about this a few times, yeah, we are. yeah. but it, it, it really is because people are trying to compare themselves to something that doesn't actually exist. Exactly, yeah. this is perfect yeah. life. Don't exist. Yeah, no and, and people chase likes and yeah, followers and all that kind of thing. Somebody could literally be crying and then two minutes later smiling for a selfie and yeah, you know yeah. dust himself off, yeah, and yeah. then people think they're having a great day. Oh yeah. Oh, they're happy again. They're broken, maybe. You know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you kind of keep. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a great thing, isn't it? Obviously, it's great for our kind of business yeah. for promoting your things. But you, I think you just got to know when to when to not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. live, live your life online. But yeah, it's it's a lot more these days with obviously social media. Well, then it's great as well because you get you know you get instant kind of feedback from the fans of the show, like... Yeah, which wasn't like, there before. No, yeah. no. No, you, you'd get, you know, you'd get fan mail here and there and yeah. that. Yeah. Did you get that literally posted? Yeah, yeah, you still... I still get it, for, well, since from Corrie now, yeah. but... Yeah, that's that seems so fashioned, doesn't it, to think yeah. you write to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They do that, yeah. Um, oh, that's cool, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other side passions away from acting? Do you think that's important? for something to run alongside, so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. I mean, I, I kind of wish now that there was something else I would have kind of latched onto at school and college and kind of trained on that a bit more, so that, you know, maybe I could have done like a little yeah. side business or something, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But everything I kind of studied did kind of go towards my, my acting, it was it was English, it was media studies. Right. Yeah, yeah. Music, I mean, I don't play anymore, but I used to play piano and saxophone. I oh, really? probably still pick it up, but I'd, I'd probably sound terrible. Saxophone, interest me that. Yeah, yeah that, that, that sounds cool. I DJ'd a few months back and I had a live sax player at Sags. Oh, you need to get back, you need to get back on it, mate. Get DJ, on it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not that good, buddy. I won't be able to do it. <coughs> well, I'll just yeah. pick it up, just get, just get going. Have a bad bad black sheep. Just still doing the stuff from school. But no, I, I do think that's an important thing to anyone young wanting to get into the business just do have a backup plan because especially these days it's so much harder to to break through i guess yeah so many more people want to do it you know maybe some for the wrong reasons just yeah. for the fame which i would totally advise against you know don't if fame is your end goal then reconsider honestly because yeah. it's not all mm. yeah if you're happy with what you're doing you know, you've made it there, and I think that's that's what it's all about, really. And how, how is that for you now? <clears throat> so, we've talked about how, you, you know, you've had a period where the work wasn't regular. Mm. For you then, so, it was like Hollyoaks you got first, wasn't it? Uh, like, was that last year? Or that's, you, oh, well, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, Did, like, Yeah, last year, yeah. So, oh no, sorry, it was 2017. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. But both Hollyoaks and Corrie were like a couple of episodes or something initially, were they? Yeah, <laughs> around about the same time. I mean, I think 2017 was when things really picked up for me again. Yeah, yeah. Like before then, I had a really quiet couple of years. Um, so, yeah. But then, you know, I'll probably have quite a couple of years down the line somewhere. Who knows? But and that's the thing. you just got to be prepared for that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it sounds like you are. Um, that, that's the good thing. I think you've got the right mindset. That Oh, you've got it's it in this business. You really have. I mean, I was saying before, even the people on Corey now who've been in it for years, they're on yearly contracts, just year by year, so even they don't know mm. when they might get cut or, you know, a new producer comes in, shuffles things up, like anything could happen, really. Because it does happen, doesn't it? it does. How, do you, how do you deal with rejection? Ah, oh, it's just something you you just have to learn, I guess, because... Do you have any strategies? Do you have any things that you do? It's, do you, do you wallow, do you wallow around for to. it? Oh, do you go, go have a to. beer with your mates? Yeah. Is, there, is there hope that you think I is your... I to do my audition and then tr just forget about it. Try your best to forget about it, because you've done it there. There's nothing yeah. else you can do Leave about it. Leave it in the room. It, you know? yeah. Obviously, it's not It's easy said and done. If it's a really big part, then you, know, you can't help but wait for that phone to ring and... It's such a horrible feeling, it isn't it? That is, when when yeah. you've got attached to a certain role, mm. I mean, I don't know. And put your all into it. I, as yeah, well. I think, I, for me, doing auditions, getting the jobs, and not getting the jobs, all, all that process, there's nothing else in life that 
feels the same. I don't know if you agree with that, but that kind mm. of uh, attachment or disappointment, and I think you, I know it's cliche, but you really do have to have thick skin and you do have to have you a good dare. way of coping with it. You do, yeah, yeah. Because when it's your main passion and it's what you love more than anything else, how can you not get attached? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. How can you not want to get that job, especially when it's the one that you think this is the one? And then you but don't get it. There's always another one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The amount of auditions where I've got and go, this would this would sort me out, this, this would be this yeah. would be it. And you don't get it. Of course you might have got it. But then you know, another one will come up and go, Oh, this will be the one, if I get this one yeah, then. Yeah. You know, Such a really work like that. No. Obviously, but yeah, it's tough. You've got to be thick skinned. It's really Which is hard. a bit paradoxical because most actors are pretty sensitive people it's as well. And they have to be. Yeah. You have to be so both. It's like, oh, yeah. You have to be really emotional mm. and really thick skinned, which yeah, doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it's almost like the thrill of it being such a roller coaster, like you talked about earlier. It is. Without, yeah. that, without the lows, you don't enjoy the highs as much. You don't exactly. appreciate them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I totally believe. So I think I think we've kind of we've covered a lot of the stuff going into us. What I'm really interested in is some of these listeners' questions because we've, yeah, we've got some we've got some ones. fun ones in today. Dan, do you wanna do you wanna start us off with a few of these? Yes. So this is an interesting. one. This is so random. Okay. Well, are, you, are, you, are you ready for random? Yeah, bring on There's the random. a few randoms. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good job you're ready. <laughs> Lee, Lee Crowther asks two celebrities are left on the planet. Who are you picking? I don't know why. I don't know. Just two seconds. I just don't so, know. I don't know why. That, is the, that is the question. Just, I you, feel like you, you are. You and, just, yeah, and, yeah, possibly, yeah. and possibly yeah. two others. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you and two others. Uh, okay, I guess another way maybe to phrase the question, two of my favourite celebrities. Go on then. I almost said flavour then. Listen, yeah. <laughs> listen uh, what's his name? Oh, not Lee. Lee. Pete didn't like your question. He's just going to change it. Just... <laughs> Oh, Where right, yeah, wrong. two people left on the planet. <laughs> well, that's a tough one, that. I know. Because my faith change all the, all the time, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm loving Keanu Reeves at the moment. I'm just... The guy's a dude. He's, he's an interesting. absolute legend. Yeah. He really is. Yeah, he's funny, very funny interesting. as well, yeah, yeah. So, I think, you know, why not? He can be on there. He'd be a good laugh. Yeah. And now you need to reproduce. Yeah. With Keanu Reeves? I'm going to have to get someone else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, who's my favourite actresses? Oh, I love it because I've just seen Chernobyl, so that's probably one of mine. Uh, what's her name now? It's Emily, isn't it? Uh, seen Emily Watson? Emily Watson. Ah, really nice. Emily Watson, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, we've got here, uh, Dom Till asks, did you always keep believing in yourself even when the acting work wasn't regular? And if so, what was it that kept that belief? Yeah, well, we kind of touched on this a bit. It was... Yeah. Yeah, at times when it's really bad, it's hard kind of to believe in yourself, really. It's more just believing in that there are options out there that, you know, there are more. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just about staying positive and trying not to, as hard as it is, trying not to be like, oh, this is it, I give up, I give up. Just be really determined and just keep going. Do you think you're naturally... If you really want to do, do it. Yeah. Do you think you're naturally quite a positive person? Yeah. I think. Mm. I mean, I overthink a lot. You've got That's to. That's a bad thing. Yeah, proper overthink everything. Yeah. But I, get, I try to, I guess, be as positive as I can. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We're overthinkers, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think. <laughs> well, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, let me think about that. Yeah, I'll think. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even answer <laughs> thinking about it. Oh, close. That was close. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Am I <laughs> 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 Yes, he is. Oh, I think well, I am. Uh, Kayla McCoy asks, aside from acting, are there any other avenues that you would like to pursue in life? Oh, see, it's a bit late now. But like I was saying, going back, picking up something else, I would have really loved to have got into some artistic -y thing. I loved drawing when I was a kid. All right. Um, so maybe some sort of graphic design-y thing or some animation-y sort of thing. Okay. Obviously, I'm too late to learn all that now. Well, I'm not, but, you know... I was going to say, are you, though? No, well, exactly, yeah. Yeah. But as as a separate thing from acting, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would have yeah. been a cool thing to do. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Yeah. You heard it here first. 
He's on it. Give Tomorrow. It years. Pencils are out. <laughs> yeah. This is one of my personal favourites. Um, you're stranded on, we've got some desert islands to put on. You are stranded on a desert island with the entire cast of Footballers Wives. Which character, in brackets, not the actor, oh, okay. would you kill and eat first? <laughs> Why do we have to eat them? <laughs> to stay alive, I'm guessing. Oh, right, yeah. Surely there's other stuff on a desert yeah, island. No, yeah, no, I'm with you there, yeah. I just... We'll just go with it. You've got to eat one of them. I didn't even go to why am I killing them? I'm like, why am I eating them? <laughs> yeah, because <yeah, laughs> yeah, I need you to kill them. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it'd have to be that bastard Jason Turner, because yeah. um, he was my love rival with Tanya Turner back in yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. Although he got his end, didn't he? Champagne bottle. Off the oh, roof. Yeah. Well, some fault. Oh, yeah. That was it. As far as TV. Do you know what? A little. Fun fact. Yes. They filmed, I can't I think it was six of us doing that champagne bottle bit because they didn't know who was going to be the, the killer. Right, family. yeah. Because when they reveal it, it's Charlene. Yes. But actually, the episode they reveal it on, the actress has quit. She, she'd already, yeah, she's she was dead already, so yeah. 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 You mean that was the bottle? She was the bottle. Chardonnay. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, yeah, I've got an Instagram and a, and a Twitter. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know what the, the handles are, Sophia? No, I just want to know. I'm sure it's, it's like Peter Ash, possibly with an 85 at the end. With the magic of editing, with this is on the screen right now, so just that's what it is. How good was that? <laughs> 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 yeah, Pete, thank you so much. Oh, um, you me, you, you're an amazing actor, but you're an amazing guy, and I love that actually you are an actually a very positive, chilled out guy, and I think that's one of the reasons you've, you've handled the highs and the lows so well. I'm sure the reality is there's, there's some days that it's pretty, it's pretty tough going, but I think oh, your, actually, your yeah. mental attitude is what's really seen yeah. you through. Just, yeah, just get up again and keep going. I mean, love that. I love that. Before you go, there's one final question we ask all the guests. Dan, would you like to do the honours? Yes. Peter, what is your definition of success? Hmm. Beard, Without overthinking. Beard scratchy. Because yeah. <laughs> we're getting better at that, yeah. all three of us. <laughs> A good beard is the <laughs> true measure of success. Uh, no, I, I, I can as I said, like, just being content, I guess, with in the moment with what you have right here and now. Yes. Because things could get better, could get a lot worse, so I don't know, just try and find something in your life to don't know, hold on to and appreciate and keep at it, yeah. Yeah, man. Nice. Nice answer. Mm -hmm. Peter Ash, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Boom. Amazing. Thank you so much for listening to today's Rich in Success episode. If this episode has impacted you, there's a few things we need you to do to help support the show right now. Please spread the word. Tell a friend that you think needs to hear our message and subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher or Google Play. And please give the show a five-star review. Don't forget to also like our social media pages and tag us on your Instagram stories. Your support means the world. Thanks again and let's keep growing together.